Thank you very much for coming here, and welcome to this session about automated functional testing uh, with behavior-driven development in LifeRay, because you know bugs are coming. And I wanted to start with a show of hands. How many of you have ever tried working in a project with test-driven development, with TDD? Oh, a lot of people, right? So keep your hand up if you liked it, if you enjoyed it. OK, most, still most of you. So behavior-driven development, BDD, is based on TDD. So you are halfway there already. I also wanted to mention some issues we have found in our career, and then I will tell you why. Uh, I'm sure this has happened to many of you, that you had a project with not very well-defined features, and you had to answer this really hard question in the life of every developer when somebody comes and says, is this a bug or a feature? Right? That, how sad is that question to you? Is, how, how you there, right? Uh, of course, it's a feature. Come on. <laughs> Shame on you for asking. So uh, it's also uh, very common, and raise your hand if this happened to you, that uh, you developed something that nobody wanted. It was the wrong feature, OK? Yeah, the other half who didn't raise your hand, I'm sure you're too tired. It <laughs> happened to every one of us at some point. Um, also, sometimes it happens that you don't really understand your project manager, your product manager, your boss, your CEO. And sometimes it's because they are American and you're a Spaniard, right? But sometimes it's because you're both speaking in English, but you don't understand each other. Um, he's talking from the features, very high level perspective. You're talking in a technical level, and you don't understand each other very well. And another common problem we've seen is that you have one broken test in your application. You have all this monitoring, and you see there's one test broken out of your 2,000 tests. So what does that mean? Is the whole application broken, or is just one minor feature that you don't really care about that is broken there? And that's very important. We call that trustability. So all these issues we've seen, uh, they are a common source of bugs. right? And we all know what happens to projects with a lot of bugs. We don't want this to happen. right? So uh, we want to show you one methodology today, BDD, Behavior Driven Development, that uh, is going to help you to solve these issues we just mentioned. BDD goes beyond, uh, beyond test-driven development, and in the words of its author, uh, Den North, it's implementing an application by describing its behavior by the perspective of the stakeholders. The stakeholders could be your project manager, product manager, uh, CEO, your boss, whoever is defining the requirements, the decision makers. And the goal is that you all sit together with your team, all these decision makers, everyone who's going to implement it, and you write the test together, all together. And the conversation you're going to have while defining those tests is the most useful thing is going to happen. Uh, you're going to say, OK, I'm going to be writing tests together with my manager. So in which language? It's going to be in Java, in C. My manager doesn't speak any of those languages, probably, right? So you're going to be using natural language. That's the goal of behavior-driven development. So instead of testing, it's going to look more like a specifying. Because you're going to be creating tests in natural language that actually specify how your application should behave. You may be thinking now, OK, so you want me to work with my manager writing tests? I, I have to convince my manager to write tests with me? That's not going to happen, right? That's like working on fire. But we can tell you we have been playing with this, and it works. So you just need to convince them. And we are going to show you some tools so that you can try to do this. So as Julio just said, uh, we are not going to talk about testing. We are going to talk about the specification. Uh, and what is the most important part of our specification? That it should be writing in almost natural English, in almost natural English <laughs> language. So, <laughs> so it can be understood and writing for all the stakeholders involved in, in the project. So here we are going to use Cucumber. Cucumber is a tool that is, what is going to help us to write uh, executable specification. So we can have a living documentation of the behavior of our app. So when we try to create a new functionality for uh, our project, we need to answer some questions. Like, for example, uh, who is going to use that feature? Uh, what is this feature are going to do? Or why should we implement it? implement it. So when we start to having a, a conversation with all the stakeholders to answer that question, uh, a very easy way to get answers is to uh, create examples. In Cucumber, those examples are called scenarios and are composed by several steps. This is why we call a specification by example, and, and a very uh, common pattern of, of describe, uh, 
those examples as uh, are giving some initial context uh, when some action takes place, then an outcome is expected. So how would you feel, Christina, if we show an example? I oh. think it's simpler than it looks. Yeah. Um, story first. So Christina and me are friends with the screenwriters of the show Game of Thrones from HBO, right? Um, they were talking to us and they were telling us how, how hard it was for them to keep track of all the characters in the show. They need to keep reminding uh, who are living, who are dead, who are in between, all these different things, right? And it's becoming really complicated for them to manage all these characters. So they wanted, they were asking us to help them with an application for doing that, and we have done uh, a first prototype of it, we'll show you later so that you can play with it too. And the first feature they wanted us to implement uh, is to slay characters, right? So we're going to use BDD to model how this process will, will work. So as Christina said, the first thing we are going to do for every feature is define who, what, and why, right? So who uh, is going to be the screenwriters of the show, uh, what, slay characters, and why, because it's the thing they need the most. In every episode, they need to slay a couple of characters. So that's why they need this feature. So the first thing we're going to do is define the scenarios for this feature, right? So we're going to be, go with slay a living character, don't allow to slay a dead character, and don't allow to slay the main character. Uh, some of them didn't agree with the last one, but we forced that requirement there. <laughs> so once you start with the scenarios, then you go into the steps for each of them, right? And it should be very simple to read and understand. So using the keywords Christina just explained, we can say, this is just one example, okay? It's not a spoiler, don't worry about it. So given Cersei is a living character, when I slay Cersei, then Cersei is dead. So it looks very simple, OK? Uh, so uh, how can we match, uh, how can we define the example that Julio just explained uh, with Cucumber? So we are going to use Gherkin. Gherkin is just playing English with some special keywords. For example, we are going to use the uh, feature keyword to define uh, the functionality that we are going to implement. For example, as a Game of Thrones a screenwriter, I want to be able to slay characters. Also, we are going to use the uh, scenario of, um, keyword to define the, uh, to define the scenario. Uh, and we are going to use another special keywords to define every one of the, of the steps. For example, here, given, when, and then. Wow, this, this looks like magic, right? How can this be an executable test? Sorry, false, but there's no any, ma uh, any magic involved in, in this. Um, and of course, we need to code something. Uh, there are many libraries that use cu Cucumber, written in many languages, for example, Cucumber, uh, for example, sorry, Scala, Groovy, Java. In this example, we are going to use uh, QCSpace. Uh, QCSpace is a, a really cool library uh, writing in the top of Archelian. And there we only need to set the path of the feature file, use a JUnit runner like QCSpace, and with some special annotation, we are going to be able to to map between the steps defining the feature file uh, and the actual code that we are going to execute to validate those steps. For example, we are going to use the annotation uh, given and a regular expression to match with the ori original file. So when you are using this in real life, you will find more complex examples than the one with Cersei, and you may need to add more details to your tests. So Cucumber provides other keywords you can use to add more details. We're going to go with a more complex scenario here. So slay the main character, for example. So given Ned Stark is a living character, but Ned Stark is the main character. You can note the but there, right? Um, when I try to kill Ned Stark, then Ned Stark really dies, and Robert Stark becomes king in the north. So you can see there are two outcomes here instead of just one, for example, having the and. And something interesting, this is how you put a comment also, just with the pound sign. And it's recommended a good practice when you define all your steps and your, all your scenarios that you put all these specifications in your repository with all the code, but all the steps are commented out. And then as your team is implementing them, they start uncommenting the lines so that you can see which parts of your specification are already implemented and which ones are not, and you can see all that in progress. So anyone looking at these files, they can see 
which parts are already working and which parts are not working yet. There's also support for lists. This is very nice. You can see areas, characters she wants to kill, her famous list. And this is the feature file in Cucumber. And then in the Java code, we will just receive a list of strings that you can use to manipulate all the strings and implement the test as you want. There's also support for tables, for data tables, for tabular data. And here you can see we are defining three characters here. This is just some feature file just saying, given these characters. And then in the Java, in your test in Java, what you will receive will be a list of characters, will be pojers, uh, plain Java objects. Each of them will have this getter for the name, the house, and the seat. So you can just work with them in any, in any way. So it's very simple to implement the Java side of this part. Another very cool feature are the examples, because this allows you to define some variables in the scenario and then reuse it for different cases. For example, we have given character one is the heir of character two, blah, 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 then character one becomes title, right? So you have variables there. And then you can say, these are my examples. So you have the three variables, like a table, and you say Geoffrey Baratheon, Robbie Baratheon, the king, right? And Robert Stark, Ned Stark, king in the north. So you can do the replacement to see that only defining one scenario, you can put many different rows to see many different examples. So it's very fast to read for everyone and simple to understand. So I know that after all this explanation, a lot of you are master in BDD right now, but what do you think if we create a, an example just from, from scratch? So as Julio said before, uh, we have created this, this cool application that you can check in the URL gol.wedeploy.io. So can, you can try it in your phone if you want. Yeah. So mm. I'm going to tip it with you. So. We can check that everything is running. Okay. Yeah. So Julio and me uh, has been for the last two weeks with the uh, Game of Thrones teams uh, receiving some feedback of the of the application. Uh, and all together, we uh, have the, have to find some new feature that we need to implement. For example. Uh, right now, it's not possible to create new characters. And as they are slaying all of them every day, it's, it's really hard to, to keep using the application. So we have defined some uh, scenarios for this. Like, for example, uh, how can we add new characters? So given I am in the list of characters, when I add a new character called Aria, then I see Aria in the list of characters. Also, we have to find the scenario of what happens when we uh, try to create a new character without a name. So given I am in the list of characters, when I add a new character with no name, then uh, the girl has no name. Oh, sorry, I think that... <laughs> no, then I can save the character. That's the right feature. So also we have uh, defined another scenarios, like for example, that we need to search by name, that we need to search by status. For example, the character is alive, dead, or in between. And of course, we need to give the screenwriters the possibility to uh, slay characters. Uh, so now we have seen that will be really cool if we uh, from this description, crea create this new implementation in, uh, in the app. So please go to bdd.wedeploy.io in your mobile phone. I'm going to do it with you. And you're going to be implementing these features <laughs> for the screen brightness of the show, OK? Yeah. I think it's better maybe if you don't use the Wi-Fi, your regular connection, maybe it works better. So type your name. Uh, and then it's going to be possible to choose between the, the features that we just described. If you click in the plus button, it's going to be possible to read the all the definition of the feature with all the scenarios and all the steps. Uh, and after that, you need to choose an uh, implementation for the feature. Uh, it's important to, to say that, of course, all the, all the options are not right. 
Some of them will work, some of them not. But as we have to uh, create a really good specification at a really good uh, scenarios, uh, we are going to receive feedback about what went wrong and what went right. So go with so, your best guess. Right? <laughs> so please uh, choose an implementation. Uh, and after some time, uh, you will check a link where you will, it's going to be possible to check the results. Okay, so you can follow this link. And if you follow this link, it will take you to your pull request in GitHub. Okay, I'm going to go there and see what happened. Okay, so I can see a lot of you sent pull requests already. Um, what's going to happen now? So in each of these pull requests, you're going to see you have this comment that we have posted for you in which you will find a lot of useful information. Okay, so you have uh, the Travis build. I will tell you more about it now. Uh, you have the code coverage of the project, the source code of the game of life, right? in case you want to reuse it, everything is open source, it's right there. Uh, you can play with the demo, and you can also find the slides of the presentation. It's all here, OK? Uh, what's going to happen next? So right now, we are testing your changes. Okay, So here, for example, in this one, uh, if you go to the list of changes, you can see what I'm doing here. For this one, this is adding new characters. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm commenting all the steps for the test so that all those, all those steps are going to be executed now. Okay? And I'm also adding the plus button to add the new characters and different things. Right? So after all that, now we, are, we have integrated GitHub with Travis. It's just one file. It's in the repository. You can see it, Travis IML. And that's going to run all the tests for every pull request that you've sent. So since we are not paying for this, this is an open source project. Uh, you are in the queue, so it's going to take a while until all of you are executed. The first one will finish in four or five minutes. The next one, we may take 10, 20, maybe one hour. So if you wait on that page, don't worry. We will post a comment after a while with the results of the execution of the test. So you will see if you are right or if you are wrong. So if I go to this one, for example, you will get this comment with the test reports. So if I go there, I will see something like this. This is the creation of characters. Uh, the other two features are not implemented yet, so they are unknown. But for this one, it's passing. So that means all these scenarios, all these scenarios are passing. You can see there. And if I go into them, you can see all the steps, which are all them passing. So anyone in your team can know that your application is working, because this is natural language. You don't need to be a Java expert to see the results and interpret what they say. This is simple for everyone. Let me go to another one. There's another pull here by Chema, the Flash developer. And let's see what Chema did, because this is saying it failed. So it's probably something wrong here. Let's go to the test report and see what happened. OK, so we can see here uh, the features, layoff characters is failing. All the scenarios are failing. Uh, let's see what happened, right? So you can see first step is passed, second step is passed. Uh, here it says, I cannot find element called kill. So let's see. And something very cool, we have a screenshot of what happened. So you can actually see what happened here. So if you look at the screen, you can see Chema chose the option hack. Jon Snow. So that is not going to kill him. That's why it's not working, right? So we shouldn't merge this change, because uh, you cannot kill people by hugging them, usually. OK. Uh, something we also added to this uh, code, you can also see how we did integration, is integrated with coveralls. And that is going to give us um, the code coverage of our project. So if you wait a bit more, another five minutes probably, you will get this other comment by coveralls. Uh, saying what's the code coverage of your project. So right now, after this test, our code coverage in these changes is 56%. And it's saying this pull request increased the code 7.1%. Uh, so you can see that is good, because it's uh, increasing the coverage of your code. And if you click there, uh, it will actually take you to this page, in which you can see that in this pull request, these files change. So the coverage increased for this one, decreased for the other. You can see everything. And then you can see for your whole project how things are going. And this is really interesting, because here you see for every file in your project how tested they are. So this is telling you which areas of your project are not tested. And it doesn't mean you need to go 100% everywhere, because that's very complicated. But for example, it's telling you things like, uh, for example, here, edit character. This is telling me that we are not actually testing at all what happens when you edit a character. So this is telling me, wow, we need to test that feature, because it could be broken, and we wouldn't even know. Right? So 
all the features that you have specified in a test like this one, when you see the report, you can see that everything is working. Things that you have not tested, you don't really know if they are broken or not, right? Your customers will tell you. So it's better if you have it this way. Uh, so you can actually see in red and in green, green are the lines which are tested. The red are the lines that you are not testing at all in any of your tests. So that means that code could be broken, and you don't really know. Uh, if you follow the link in your pull request to the um, demo, you will find this demo. And here you can search, you can try the search now, so you can search for Jon. You know nothing, Jon. And search for Jon Snow here. You can also uh, kill characters. Like kill them. And you can also and you can also revive them if you want. And you can also add new characters. So all these features are here. You can see all the source code in the repository. You have the link to the source code in the pull request. OK, so play with it. If you wait long enough, you will get the comments with the results. So now the next thing that happens is now we have your pull request with your changes. Now we could merge those changes. And then maybe they should go into a next most intensive testing phase. And then that could go into production so that they automated or not, it depends, so that the screen barriers can start using these features as soon as possible, right? It could be all automated from GitHub until production. Uh, and these guys, tomorrow, Eduardo and Ruben are going to be talking about how to do that, the continuous deployment, continuous delivery, how to go from this game of library from right now, from the moment you merge the pull request until the screen barriers can start using it. And they are going to show you how to automate the whole process. So that's all. Thank you very much for coming here. Uh, we'll be very happy to answer any question you have, either now or later. We'll be here today and the whole day tomorrow. And don't forget to rate us in the app if you liked, if you liked it. Thank you very much. Thank you.